boosts production, increases ventilation, prolongs the growing cycle, and reduces disease incidence. A trellis system consists of posts and wires that support the vertical growth of plants. Greenhouse tomatoes, which can grow to over 9 meters in height, are trellised so that the tops of the plants are moved along the horizontal trellis wire as the plant grows. Eventually, the lower portions of the main stem will run horizontally along the floor, keeping fruit clusters low to the ground and making the harvest easier. There are three types of pruning done to a tomato plant. Removing the sucker, fruit thinning, and removing the leaves below a harvested cluster. The first type of pruning is done at the intersection of the leaf and the main stem. Suckers are the leaves that grow from these intersections. Their removal minimizes branching, prevents shading, and improves ventilation. Ideally, this pruning should take place while the sucker is around 2 cm long. Fruit thinning is the second type of pruning. The amount thinned depends on the market preference for the size of the fruit. The fewer the fruit in the cluster, the bigger each individual tomato. The third type of pruning involves removing the leaves below the harvested cluster up to the next cluster. This is done five days before harvest. Pruning these leaves removes the older, largely non-functional leaves, provides better air circulation around the bottom of the plant, and stimulates fruit ripening. A disinfectant solution can be used during pruning to avoid transmittance of diseases by workers. There are different pruning methods for greenhouse cucumbers. The specific method used depends on the cucumber variety, market preferences, and production system used. Pruning dictates how much lateral growth occurs off the main stem. More lateral growth means more cucumbers of smaller size. Since greenhouse crops are isolated from natural pollination, an alternate means of pollination needs to be developed. Honeybees are good pollinators, but bumblebees are even better due to their high work rate and docile nature. One hive per greenhouse, or two to four per acre, is sufficient to achieve the required levels of pollination. Cucumber flowers that are not properly pollinated result in deformed fruit. In the case of tomatoes, little pollination is actually performed by insect pollinators. Rather, most pollination is carried out by wind. Since this is not possible in the greenhouse environment, an alternate pollination method is needed. Manual pollination should take place when the plants are producing pollen and when environmental conditions are right. Relative humidity should be between 60 and 70 percent and temperature between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. These conditions are usually found during the middle of the day. One method is to gently shake the tomato plants or to hit the wires of the trellising system with a stick while walking through the greenhouse. The movement of the plants will be enough to spread the pollen. Other methods of manual pollination include air pressure from a gas-powered spray pack or vibrating battery-powered wands that agitate the pollen in each flower. Although they are not required, bumblebees may also be used in tomato greenhouses. They won't visit each individual flower, but their weight and activity within the greenhouse will agitate flowering clusters and cause pollen transfer. Although greenhouses are designed to exclude the entry of pests, it doesn't mean that they are pest-free. Pests enter on transplants, through ventilation openings, or through the negligence of the personnel working in the greenhouse. Once pests become established, they can be very destructive and difficult to get rid of. Since a greenhouse is a closed environment and bumblebees may be present, pesticide use should be restricted. 